Nomine Patris, Filii et Spiritus Sancti, Amen, Intui, Buarautare Dei. Iudicami Deus e Deixa ne causa meum Dei Genion Sancta, Bomini Nicodoroso e Dovei Mei. Emite Lutzem Tua me Veritatem Tua. If the may deduce the one that adduce the one in Monday, Sanctum to met in Tabernacle to one. Confitable TV, Chistra Deus, Deus meus, Quare tristes es anima mea, Quare conturbas me.
Gloria Patri et Filio et Spiritui Sancto. In Vibora Tare Dei. Adjutorio Nostum in Domine Domini. Confitio di Unipodinti, Beate Maria, Sempivio Sini, Beate Micheria Cancelo, Beate Ioane Bautiste, Santis Apostoli, Petro e Paolo Omnibus, Santis e Vobis Fratres, qui a Pecavini, Biscotti, Tassi, Ne Vebo e Ropere, Mea Cupa, Mea Cupa, Mea Maxi, Patricia. Il Dio preco, Beata Maria, Sempivio Sini, Beate Michele, Vacangelo, Beate Ioane Bautista, Sanctus Apostolos Petem e Paolo Momne Sanctus e Vos Fratres, orare pro mere Dominum Deum Nostro. Amen. Misteriato veste, omnipotens Deus, et te misus picatis vestes, producat vos ad vitam eternam. Indulgentiam absolutiam et emistiam et peccatorum nostro contibat nobis omnipotens et misericos dominus. Deus te conversus vivificabis nos. Ostende nobis domine misericore de amatuam. Domine exaurio ratione meam. Dominus fabiscum. Orremus.
adorate de omnes angeli eos a divide le tate sessione ex utavion fidi aiute. Domus e navide ex ute terre le tendo in sene multe. Gloria pati e fidi e spirito e santo. Sico de rat in principio e nuge sempre et in secola secolocum. Amen. Adorate de omnes angeli eos a divide le tate sessione ed ex utavion fidi aiute. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Gloria in excelsis Deo.
Vishy la misericordia, benignità di umilità di modestia, ma pazienza. Su botandes in vice, metonandes, vobis, metim, se si qui salvezza, sale qui, ave querela. Si gred dominus, tu nave vobis, eta et pas. Suba omnia de me carita de ma pete quale vinculo perfezionis. E pax e crese rexuter in cordibus fesis in quale invocati estis in nono coprecati estote. Veo man quisti abete ne vobis abondante. In omnia sabiense rocentis e comandentes fos me tipsos. Salmis in nise candi spirituali vos in grazie cantanti in corri di vos vestris Deo. Ogni eco e comunque facit in fiorobo aut in opere. Ogni nomine nomine nostri, Iesu Christi. Grazie se gente te o te pade per Iesu Christo. Dominum nostri. Ti me bu gentes nomen tuum domine omnes regis tere gloria in tu. Quanim edificabit domine si sia ne vita e vita maestra te sia. Alleluia, alleluia. Domine sveni a vedere tutte e tutte le dette e tutte le multe. Alleluia. e lo benedicare se ci sono reclamabili Amen Dominus Vavis Com Sequencia Sancti Evangelii Secondo Matteo In il tempo lei, disse Gesù, tu rubi sparo, parlo, parlo, anche, se me ne fate, mi stringe, c'è un uomini, qui se me ne avete, poi se me ne avete, 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 Comando in crevi se ruba e frutto un feci set, tu capare vengo in ete zit zannia. Accidenti dati in suoi padri e famiglia, stic se vuol ehi, domine non è buono in seme in seme in esti in agrotto, onde ego abit si zannia. Et aeti ne si nemicus omo ok feci du. Se vi ho tempi se vuol ehi, vis in musei collici vuol ehi, alla e non ne voti collici di Sisania e ricerissimo come essere trittico. Si ne deve tutto acque crescere, usque ad me stem, ed in tempo le mesi sti canti storie buonse, collici le prime Sisania, adicata e infascicosa al comburdendo, 
Hedi kovatem kongregatin orreom meiom. The Mass today is for the fifth Sunday after the Epiphany, and the Epistle is taken from the letter of the Apostle St. Paul to the Colossians. Brethren, put ye on as the elect of God, holy and beloved, the bowels of mercy, benignity, humility, modesty, patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another if any ever complained against another. Even as the Lord hath forgiven you, so you also. But above all these things have charity, which is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of Christ rejoice in your hearts, wherein also you are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you abundantly, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns and spiritual canticles, singing in grace in your heart to God. Or whatsoever you do in word or in work, all things do ye in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God and the Father through Jesus Christ our Lord. And the Holy Gospel is saying from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. At that time, Jesus spoke this parable to the multitudes, the kingdom of heaven is likened to a man that sowed good seed in his field. But while men were asleep, his enemy came and oversowed cockle among the wheat and went his way. And when the blade was sprung up and had brought forth fruit, then appeared also the cockle. And the servants of the good man of the house coming said to him, Sir, didst thou not sow good seed in thy field? Whence then? hath it cockle. And he said to them, An enemy hath done this. And the servant said to him, Wilt thou that we go and gather it up? And he said, No. Lest perhaps gathering up the cockle, you root up the wheat also together with it, suffer both to grow until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather up first the cockle, and bind it into bundles to burn, but the wheat gather ye into my barn. It's a couple of announcements. First of all, there has been a change in the code to the gate. For security reasons, we had to change it. We'll give the new code to responsible adults who will not give it to children or strangers. We have then a, a practice for the altar boys after Mass this morning. We'll go over the junior acolyte requirements in particular. You find in the bulletin the results for the Eucharistic Crusade for the month of January. We collected 38 treasure sheets and the results of the treasure are there. Next Sunday is Septuagesima Sunday and you have a note on Septuagesima Tide in the bulletin as well. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. Suffer both to grow until the harvest. I hope you understood the parable of the wheat and the cockle, it's the weeds. And to understand you have to see that when the Wheat is 
young, it's green, just like the weeds. You can't tell the difference. You can't separate one from another. But when the wheat is ripe, it goes golden and brown. And then you can separate the weeds and the wheat easily. It's a symbol. As every parable is. And our Lord explains. The harvest is the end of the world. The sower is our Lord Jesus Christ. The enemy who oversowed the weeds is the devil. And so God will leave all to go until the end of the world because we can't see by looking at people whether they're good or bad. Only God knows. The separation of the good and the bad will take place at the end of the world, suffer both to grow until the harvest. But here we have a mystery. The fathers of the church quote this parable in refuting the heresy of the Donatists. Now the Donatist heresy was this, that in the church of Christ there are only perfect persons. No sinners, nothing evil, nothing bad. Because the church is pure and holy. Now it's certainly true the church is pure and holy and good. But the church was made for sinners. And now the Bible says is very clear about that. St. Augustine, in refuting the error of the Donatists, says, Do not be astonished when you come to the church as a multitude of evil men who worship God, receive Holy Communion, listen to the sermons, praise the priests, but yet they're evil. Don't be surprised, because there is in the church this mixture. And that leads us to the next question, why? Why should there be in the church and in the world this mixture of good and evil? Why is it? that Almighty God, who is all good, and who made his creation to be all good, should allow evil to exist. Couldn't he have done much better than that and had a world in which there was no evil? Surely. And if he did permit evil, why so much of it? Why so much heartache and, and dissension, so many wars, so many murders, in the world around us, where the evil of broken marriages and abortions and, and, and hatred that which we see all around us. Why? Why would God have allowed all that to happen? The problem of evil is one which has preoccupied man from the very beginning. And of course, the answer to this is given only by our divine Savior, by God. First of all, we have to make a distinction between the two kinds of evils that there are. There is physical evil and there is moral evil. Physical evil is suffering and death and sickness. Now that's natural in nature after original sin that there be suffering and death. And that suffering affects mankind. Just as the lion cannot survive unless the antelope is killed. So likewise in the chain of nature. And it's so for man, once he lost the gift of impassibility and immortality. Likewise. But we can understand physical evil and suffering because it has a purpose. It reminds us of our mortality. It reminds us of our littleness. It makes us pray to God for health and strength. It reminds us that we are only on this earth temporarily for a short period of time and that consequently we must not be too attached to it. We must look to heaven as our goal. Whereas if we had no suffering and no death, it would be very easy to forget those eternal truths. So we can understand why it is that God actually wills physical evil for our own good. But what about moral evil, sin, which offends God so much? 
He cannot will something of that nature which offends him. And he certainly does not will sin. But he permits it. Why does he permit so many sins, so much evil, that offends him so much on this earth? This is a question which we must resolve. And we can see a couple of reasons why it is. Inasmuch as our human minds can penetrate the mystery of divine providence, which orders all things to the good of those who love God, and shows his loving kindness towards us constantly, yet he permits evil. Even our own sins he permits. Our own faults. Yes. Why? A couple of reasons. first reason he permits is for the glory of God himself. Because God's glory and majesty and divine omnipotence is most perfectly manifested when he forgives sins and the sinner. That's when we really see the love that God has towards us, which if we hadn't offended at him and sinned against him, we would never have seen. Think about our divine Savior coming upon this earth. You know the story of Zacchaeus, the great publican from Jericho, who had, was a great sinner, cheated and taken advantage of people constantly. But here's the Jesus is coming along. So what does he do? He's a short man, he couldn't see him. He climbed up a sycamore tree so he could look from on top, look down, and see him passing by. And as Jesus passes by, he says to him, Zacchaeus, come down from the tree, for today salvation has come to your house. And he came down. The people were astonished when they saw him coming down and said, if he were a prophet, he would know this man is a great sinner. And Jesus says to him, Today, I'm going to come into your house. And he says in response, And if I have cheated anybody, I will give them back fourfold. And half of all my goods I will give to the poor. And I will say, He is truly a son of Abraham. Because then this is why I came. The Son of Man came to seek and to find that which was lost. He shows his goodness and love in forgiving sinners. And it's a constant message of the gospel that our divine Savior shows. St. Paul points it out with respect to himself. In his letter to St. Timothy, he says, this is a faithful word and worthy of all acceptation that the Son of Man came onto this earth to save sinners of whom I am the first. And that... He has shown forth his patience towards me and towards so many sinners. He refers to the fact that he was a persecutor of the church, that he was instrumental in the martyrdom of St. Stephen, the first martyr. And that by refusing the gospel, he had done so much evil. But yet, his conversion on the road to Damascus proves the mercy of Almighty God by which he vanquishes evil and sin. So we can see that it's for the greater honor and glory of God that he permitted sin, that by his mercy he might vanquish it. Also, it is. He permitted sin for the good of all of us, that we might remember our weakness, our littleness, our frailty, that we might turn to God for his grace and help and not presume on our own efforts, that we might understand how wretched we really are, and that we might give all the honor and glory to Almighty God. And so, God permitted evil to come into this world that we might vanquish evil by doing good. For we live 
in a church, in a time in which we have to fight for what is right and good and true. And it's by fighting for that which is right and good and true that we vanquish that which is bad, that which is wrong, that which is erroneous, that which is deceptive. We vanquish the devil. And it's by that fight that we, in our own turn, gain merits for heaven. So we can see it's a part of God's plan for our souls too. He even permitted our own sins, that we might learn from our mistakes, be sorry for our stupidity, amend our ways, and depend upon God and His grace. It's all part of His plan of divine love and mercy. And likewise, His plan, his plan for the church, which is why the church is filled with sinners. And on purpose, why did our Lord institute the church? To save souls. As he said, the physician does not come for those who are healthy, but for those who are sick. Those who are sick in their sins, he stirs the church. And that's why he has the sacraments of the dead. Baptism by which we enter into the church as sinners. And then if we fall afterwards, the sacrament of penance. By which the sinner returns back to his Lord and his God. And that's the strange paradox that the church which is holy in its founder, holy in its teachings, holy in its saints, holy in its ideals is yet filled with sinners who are far removed from those ideals. But it's there for us to elevate us, to bring us along. So that's the mystery of the church which has an outward unity to it. Exterior, based upon baptism and the sacraments and the Holy Mass, the profession of faith, submission to the sovereign pontiff. It's external, it's outward, which makes the visible body of the church. But then there's an internal unity too, which is the unity of grace, of the divine life, of the life of Christ. And that's why it's perfectly possible to be a member of the church externally, but to lack the divine life internally, to be a dead member, but yet a member all the same, longing for life, longing for grace, longing for Christ to dwell in our hearts. And that's the mystery of the church, which is like that field in which the good and the evil grow until the end of time. The evil are there for the good's advantage for us and for their conversion likewise. And why does God permit the evil in the church? So that they might change their lives and change their hearts. And for us too. As St. Augustine points out, if there were no evil, there would be so many virtues that we would be lacking. There would be no martyrs. There'll be no fortitude. There'll be no patience by which we overcome evil by doing good. We wouldn't have the opportunity to practice these wonderful virtues by which we show our love of God. So we see some of the reasons why it is that God has permitted evil and helps us to understand a little bit the crisis in the church at the present time. And if the church is always suffered from evil within its bosom in various forms, heresies, schisms. St. Paul even says so in his letter to the Corinthians. In his first letter to the Corinthians, I hear there are schisms amongst you, and I believe it in part, which means there are arguments, dissensions. And in his second letter, he goes on to say, I fear lest they might become worse. More dissensions and arguments and quarrels and difficulties amongst you, which should not be. Evil has always existed in the church. Sinners have always been there. Unfaithful Catholics. And so we shouldn't be surprised that in our modern times, we have evil in the church also, but under a different form, perhaps, than in the past. Under the form of naturalism, denying the supernatural, the necessity of grace, and the necessity of penance for our sins. And the form of indifferentism, denying the unicity of the one true church that Christ founded, necessary for our salvation. 
and the cover of humanism directed towards man as the center and preoccupation of all our activities, not God's honor and glory and our divine Savior. We're under cover of the undermining and diminution of the mystery of the cross. And we can see then that this evil within the church is but an encouragement for us to be truly militant in our practice of the faith in preparing for one day in which we'll part of that church in heaven where there is no evil, the church triumphant. If we really want to understand the mystery of evil, we have to look at the cross of our divine Saviour and see what it is that God made man wanted to suffer for us. In his human nature, he bore all the physical sufferings, the most exquisite torments that a man can suffer when he suffered upon the cross. And in his soul, in his agony, he bore the sins of the whole world that affected and insulted God so much. He bore all that evil that he might vanquish evil. The Lord has laid upon him the sins of us all, the prophet Isaiah tells us. And so he overwhelms. He's overwhelmed by the evil and he vanquishes it. The cross is the key because it shows how much God loves us and the depth and extent of his divine love is revealed in the mystery of the cross, which is why the cross touches and converts souls, and why the cross is the key to overcoming of evil, and why we must love the cross of our Lord. And when we do, we'll understand why it is that God permitted evil on this earth, and why it is that he wants us to take up our cross, and follow him after him, that we might be one with him in the victory that he won on the cross. Victory over evil, suffering, insults, dissensions, hard feelings, bitterness, all kinds of evil, he vanquished it on the cross. And so, let us learn to love our cross so that we might live in the presence of God who lives in our presence always because he's everywhere. One day, when St. Thomas Aquinas was dying, on his deathbed, one of the Dominican friars begged of him a last counsel as he was dying. And he said to him, what do I need to do to become a saint? And St. Thomas of Aquinas said, keep yourself always in the presence of God. Never lose that awareness that God is everywhere around you, in your heart by grace. And then you will carry your cross, and you won't offend him. You'll do his holy will. And that advice, to all of us that through the power of the cross in the presence of God our Lord we might vanquish all the evil around us. Let's beg the Blessed Virgin Mary she who had no stain of sin or evil in her whatsoever who was the perfect victor over all manner of evil from her immaculate conception to her assumptions of heaven that she might obtain for us the grace to share in her glorious victory on this earth that we might be amongst her companions and servants in heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.
prayed all in on on day
Ah, mais ils ont dit ce soir que tu dis de vivre nous donne la vie de respecter ce fait de vous aider à vivre ainsi, ce ministre. Et vous constatez vos cérébrons de vos fidèles et vos christianes, ce ministre. Donc, lui qui dit l'espoir, puis tu l'as fait, tu m'as pitié. Thank you. 
Frate, 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 Omnia secola secolo Dominus Babiscum Sors in
Rubis, Coco e Pecatoribus. Omnia secula seculo omum. Olemus precepteis salutaribus moniti. Et infinis delusione pomati audemus dicerei. Pater Noste, qui es in celis, sanctificetur nomen tuum, avenia regnum tuum, fia voluntas tua, sicut in cello et in terra. Pane nostrum quotidianum da nobis ordie, et imite nobis debita nostra, sicule nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentaziones. Omnia secula seculorum. Ax domini sit semper vobiscum. And you stay with all this big at the moon, the misery in the And you stay with all this big at the moon, the misery in the And you stay with all this big at the moon, the tunnel of his patch.
Domine non sedinius. Domine non sedinius. Domine non sedinius. Miseriato vesti, omnipotens Deus, et dimis, spigatis vestis, producat vostra vita meternam. Indulgentiam absolut, sine mele missione, peccatorum vesto, untibua bobis omnipotens, et misericos dominus. Ecce agnus Dei, ecce quittodi de peccata mundi, Domine non su digno, su rinza e su tectum meum, se tanto dic verbo et su nabito anima mea. Domine non su digno, su rinza e su tectum meum, se tanto dic verbo et su nabito anima mea. Domine non su digno, su rinza e su tectum meum, se tanto dic verbo est in abito animo mio. Corpus Domini Nasti Iesu Christi, custodia t'animo in tua mia vita, vita in tua mia. Corpus Domini Nasti Iesu Christi, custodia t'animo in tua mia vita, vita in tua mia. Corpus Domini Nasti Iesu Christi, custodia t'animo in tua mia vita, vita in tua mia. Corpus Domini Nasti Iesu Christi, custodia t'animo in tua mia vita, vita in tua mia. Corpus Domini Nostri Iesu Christi, custodia d'animo in tua mi vita, mi tu. Corpus Domini Nostri Iesu Christi, custodia d'animo in tua mi vita, mi tu. Corpus Domini Nostri Iesu Christi, custodia d'animo in tua mi vita, mi tu. Corpus Domini Nostri Iesu Christi, custodia d'animo in tua mi vita, mi tu. Corpus Domini Nostri Iesu Christi, custodia d'animo in tua mi vita, mi tu. Corpus Domini Nostri Iesu Christi, custodia d'animo in tua mia vita, vita in tua mia vita. 
Corpus Dominus, die Jesu Christi, Christoriert an die Mantua mi vita mit. Corpus Dominus, die Jesu Christi, Christoriert an die Mantua mi vita mit. Corpus Dominus, die Jesu Christi, Christoriert an die Mantua mi vita mit. Corpus Dominus, die Jesu Christi, Christoriert an die Mantua mi vita mit. Corpus Dominus, die Jesu Christi, Christoriert an die Mantua mi vita mit. Corpus Dominus, die Jesu Christi, Christoriert an die Mantua mi vita mit. Corpus Dominus, die Jesu Christi, Christoriert an die Mantua mi vita mit. Corpus Dominus, die Jesu Christi, Christoriert an die Mantua mi vita mit. Amen. Corpus Dominus, die Jesu Christi, Christoriert an die Mantua mi vita mit. Corpus Dominus, die Jesu Christi, Christoriert an die Mantua mi vita mit. Corpus Dominus, die Jesu Christi, Christoriert an die Mantua mi vita mit. Corpus Dominus, die Jesu Christi, Christoriert an die Mantua mi vita mit. Corpus Dominus, die Jesu Christi, Christoriert an die Mantua mi vita mit. Corpus Dominus, die Jesu Christi, Christoriert an die Mantua mi vita mit. Corpus Dominus, die Jesu Christi, Christoriert an die Mantua mi vita mit. Corpus Dominus, die Jesu Christi, Christoriert an die Mantua mi vita mit. Amen. Corpus Dominus, die Jesu Christi, Christoriert an die Mantua mi vita mit. Amen. Corpus Dominus, die Jesu Christi, Christoriert an die Mantua mi vita mit. Amen. Corpus Dominus, die Jesu Christi, Christoriert an die Mantua mi vita mit. Amen. Corpus Dominus, die Jesu Christi, Christoriert an die Mantua mi vita mit. Amen. Corpus Dominus, die Jesu Christi, Christoriert an die Mantua mi vita mit. Amen. Corpus Dominus, die Jesu Christi, Christoriert an die Mantua mi vita mit. Amen. Corpus Dominus, die Jesu Christi, Christoriert an die Mantua mi vita mit. Amen. Corpus Domini Nostri, Jesu Christi, Custodit, Alimento, Mami, Vita, Vita, Amen. 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 Corpus Domini Nostri, Jesu Christi, Custodit, Tua, Vita, Vita, Amen. Amen. Corpus Domini Nostri, Jesu Christi, Custodit, Alimento, Mami, Vita, Vita, Amen. Amen. Corpus Domini Nostri, Jesu Christi, Custodit, Tua, Vita, Vita, Amen. Amen. Corpus Domini Nostri, Jesu Christi, Custodit, Alimento, Mami, Vita, Vita, Amen. Amen. Corpus Domini Nostri, Jesu Christi, Custodit, Tua, Vita, Vita, Amen. Corpus Domini Nostri, Jesu Christi, Custodit, Tua, Vita, Vita, Amen. Corpus Domini Nostri, Jesu Christi, Custodit, Tua, Vita, Vita, Amen. Corpus Domini Nostri, Jesu Christi, Custodit, Tua, Vita, Vita, Amen. Corpus Domini Nostri, Jesu Christi, Custodit, Tua, Vita, Vita, Amen. Corpus Domini Nostri, Jesu Christi, Custodit, Tua, Vita, Vita, Amen. Corpus Domini Nostri, Jesu Christi, Custodit, Tua, Vita, Vita, Amen. Corpus Domini Nostri, Jesu Christi, Custodiet Anima Tua, Vita Vita Anima Amen. Corpus Domini Nostri, Jesu Christi, Custodiet Anima Tua, Vita Vita Anima Amen. Corpus Domini Nostri, Jesu Christi, Custodiet Anima Tua, Vita Vita Anima Amen. Corpus Domini Nostri, Jesu Christi, Custodiet Anima Tua, Vita Vita Anima Amen. Corpus Domini Nostri, Jesu Christi, Custodiet Anima Tua, Vita Vita Anima Amen. Corpus Domini Nostri, Jesu Christi, Custodiet Anima Tua, Vita Vita Anima Amen. Corpus Domini Nostri, Jesu Christi, Custodiet Anima Tua, Vita Vita Anima Amen. Corpus Domini Nostri, Jesu Christi, Custodiet Anima Tua, Vita Vita Amen. Corpus Domini Nostri, Jesu Christi, Custodiet Anima Tua, Vita Vita Anima Amen. Corpus Domini Nostri, Jesu Christi, Custodiet Anima Tua, Vita Vita Anima Amen. Corpus Domini Nostri, Jesu Christi, Custodiet Anima Tua, Vita Vita Anima Amen. Corpus Domini Nostri, Jesu Christi, Custodiet Anima Tua, Vita Vita Anima Amen. Corpus Domini Nostri, Jesu Christi, Custodiet Anima Tua, Vita Vita Anima Amen.
Mira, cuando on este hijo de Poche y levante o reine. Dominus Pavis Gong. Oremus, Vesemus Omnipotens Deus, Ot in Leus Salutaris Capiamus Effectum, Cius Beg Mysteria Pinius Acepimus, Per Dominum Nostrum Iesum Christum Filium Tuum, Qui Tecum Vivere Regna in Unitate Spiritus Sancti Deus, Per omnia secola secolo. Dominus Fabius Quum. Benedicat vos omnipotens Deus, Pater et Filius et Spiritus Sanctus. Dominus Fovisco. Initium Sancti Evangelii, secondo mio annem. In principio era il verbo, il verbo era il tapote di Deo, il Deo era il verbo, il verbo era il principio, il verbo di Deo. Omnia per Ips, il fatto solo è sin Ips, il fatto è messo, il fatto è messo, il fatto è messo. In Ips, il vita era, il vita era, il verbo 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 era, il non era tele lux, era il testimonio per i bere te lumine, era lux vera e quel lumina tomne momine venite a minuto mondo, il mondo era te mondo spirito, non faccio il stesso mondo se io non con mia vita, in propria venite sui e io non ecce perunt, qua quella te ne ecce perunt, e in derite e sparistane fili osse te i fieri, che spi credo di nomine e spi non est anguili, vos te vis volontà di carnis, e vis volontà di viri, se rex te o natis. E verbo un carro fatto in mesti, e da vita vita in nobis e vita in questo gloria mesti, gloria in quasi ogni genere di apparato, meno grazie e verità di sé. Holy Name Pledge. Blessed be God, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, I profess publicly my belief that our Lord Jesus Christ is the Son of God, made man for the salvation of mankind. I recognize his divine authority and believe that all power on earth, civil and religious, comes from him. A lawfully constituted authority, I respect and promise to obey. May the God of justice guide the minds and uphold the head of those vested with its power. May the God of might break asunder the bonds of those met together against the Lord and against his Christ. In honor of his divine name, I pledge myself against perjury, blasphemy, Profanity and obscene speech. Praise be the name of God. And blessed be the name of His divine Son. Now and forever.
sing. Praise be Jesus Christ the King. Lord of earth, sky and sea, King of love on the Calvary. Pater, Sempre, Filho, 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 Filho